Hello, my name is Joachim Suter. I'm a LANA certified lymphedema therapist and the founder of the Academy of Lymphatic Studies. And today I would like to talk to you about the incidence and prevalence of primary lymphedema. There are different types of lymphedema and depending on the etiology, lymphedema can be classified as either primary or secondary. The formation of primary lymphedema is caused by pathologies affecting the lymphatic system directly in form of a developmental abnormality. The most common abnormalities are hypoplasia and hyperplasia involving the lymph vessels or lymph nodes or both. Hypoplasia is more common and refers to an incomplete development of lymph vessels or lymph nodes. In this case, the number of these lymphatic structures is reduced or the size of the lymph vessels is smaller than normal. This can lead to an incomplete transport of lymph fluid which may result in swelling. Hyperplasia, the other common malformation, is also known as lymphangiectasia or megalymphatics. This abnormality is generally associated with a structural enlargement or a dilation of lymph vessels. The enlargement of the lymph vessels in this case may result in a malfunction of the valves located within uh, the lymph collectors, which can compromise the flow of lymphatic fluid. The third and rarest developmental abnormality is known as lymphatic aplasia. This form describes the absence of single lymph vessels or nodes, which may be the cause for the onset of primary lymphedema. Now, as far as the incidence of primary lymphedema is concerned, it is far less common than the secondary form. Primary lymphedema has been estimated to occur in one uh, out of 6,000 individuals, predominantly in females, with a ratio of one male to three females. Also typical for primary lymphedema is that in the majority of cases, the lower extremities are affected. The age of the patient at the time of onset of the swelling is the determining factor when it comes to the classification of primary lymphedema. Primary lymphedema can be classified as congenital or pediatric lymphedema, which is present at birth or within the first two years of life and account for 10 to 25% of all cases of primary lymphedema. Boys are typically affected at birth and girls most often present with lymphedema during adolescence. A subgroup of patients um, with congenital lymphedema has a family uh, pattern of inheritance, which is known as Milroy's disease. The most common form of primal lymphedema is lymphedema precox or Meigs disease. By definition, lymphedema precox becomes clinically evident after birth and before the age of 35. This condition accounts for 65 to 80 percent of all primary lymphedema cases and most often arises during puberty or pregnancy. A relatively rare form of primary lymphedema is when the uh, first signs of swelling appear after the age of 35. In this case, the condition uh, is called lymphedema tarda. Now, lymphedema is a chronic and progressive condition. And as I mentioned before, in the case of primary lymphedema, uh, the swelling manifests itself most often in the lower extremities. Now, what are the effects of primary lymphedema? Well, the onset of primary lymphedema is gradual in most patients. And as the condition progresses, the affected areas may develop hardening of the tissues, which is known as lymphostatic uh, fibrosis. There may be additional deposits of fatty tissues, skin changes such as uh, warts and papillomas, and frequent infections. In many cases, specifically if no treatment is initiated, lymphedema can lead to an extreme enlargement of the affected body part, in case of primary lymphedema, usually the lower extremities, which is known as lymphocellic elephantiasis. Without any treatment or if poorly treated, 
lymphedema can become more severe and lead to significant physical, social and uh, psychological problems. Infections or cellulitis in the affected body part are common and may result in frequent hospitalizations. Now, there is currently no cure for lymphedema. However, its symptoms and progression may be mitigated by appropriate treatment. Proper treatment has uh, been shown to reduce the symptoms associated with lymphedema, reduce the incidence of hospitalizations for complications, as well as to reduce the number of physician and therapy visits. The goal of any uh, treatment is to reduce the swelling and to maintain the reduction, that is to bring the lymphedema back to a normal or near normal size so the individuals can continue with their activities of daily living. Another goal, of course, is to uh, limit the risk of infections. In order to reduce the swelling, it is necessary to reroute the lymph flow uh, which in, uh, the lymph fluid, which is high in protein, around the blocked areas into more centrally located healthy lymph vessels. This goal is achieved by a combination of different treatment modalities, all of which are components of a treatment system known as complete decongestive therapy or CDT. The components of CDT include manual lymph drainage or MLD, compression therapy, decongestive and breathing exercises and skin and nail care. If CDT is applied correctly by a skilled and certified lymphedema therapist, it shows excellent long-term results in both primary and secondary lymphedema. You can find out more about primary lymphedema and its treatment on a website uh, no, uh, called Lymphedema Blog, uh, which is a website dedicated uh, to provide free and up-to-date information uh, to patients affected by lymphedema, uh, lipedema and other forms of swelling. Uh, you can log on to www.lymphedemablog.com and just click on any article that may be of interest to you on the index, which is on the left side of the website.